welcome to Floss Tube and Variety Show number 54. I'm Emily Williams in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Thanks for joining me this evening. This is August, mm, early in August. It is the 5th, I think, of August. Let's look. Oh, my watch is taken up with starting the video, so I think it's the 5th. I think it's the 5th around there. It's a Friday evening in any case. Uh, thanks for joining me today and as you listened at the, or as the video came on, I hope you noticed that I have a little theme music now. That is an arrangement that my husband made for our church of the hymn um, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms, which is one of our favorite hymns. It's a late 19th century hymn text and I think hymn tune and he did a kind of a jazzy arrangement of it recently and that's a, tip, a little section of the intro and when the video closes you'll hear a little section of the end of his arrangement as well. So I hope you enjoyed that. I've been wanting to get some music to go with my video so there it is. So floss tube is about cross stitch primarily, and the variety show is about something else, and we'll see what that turns out to be. But let's start with cross stitch. I'm gonna show you a sampler number 193 by, you know, I said I was gonna write on the back of this piece of paper, but I didn't. Oops, and it's also upside down. Not that that matters at all because it's symmetrical, uh, two by two stitch art, which is an Etsy shop. It's a Ukrainian designer, many beautiful designs on her Etsy shop. And that is it. And I started in the center and I'm working my way up. And I used this um, for a couple of evenings recently, since the beginning of August in a challenge that I'm part of in semi-sane stitchers. So I've made quite a bit of progress. I've probably put six, five or 600 stitches in it since the last time I showed it to you. And that's been fun, but I need to branch out and do other things for that challenge because I need to make progress on some other things. That is the easiest thing to make progress on though because it's um, all one color floss. That's 16 count white Ada uh, by Zweigart and it is DMC number 777, two threads, using two threads. This is, let me get the book, wait, wait, wait. This is from this book, Sweet Land of Liberty. Now, I haven't done any more since I showed it to you last, but I'm showing it to you today. This is called In Full Glory. Um, I'm showing it to you today because this is the first weekend in the month and the first weekend of every month, I participate in the Blackbird Design Weekend Stitch Along, where people stitch whatever Blackburn, Blackbird thing they're working on. And so this is where I left off last month. So I plan to work on this this evening and this weekend some, make some more progress on it. Blackbird is really fun to stitch. Um, I'm using Nantucket Brew, I think it's called. I can't tell you who the um, dyer is of that fabric because it's 40 count linen. Because when I bought it, it wasn't labeled with who the manufacturer was or the um, dyer. So don't know. Some of you who are familiar with linen and their names probably know. So anyway, that's been fun to work on. I made a little progress on Eliza Stringer, age six, which this is the Hands Across the Sea uh, sampler reproduction that is provided to the participants in the Great British Sampler Weekend, which is next fall, a year more than a year from now. And I've done a few more of those little designs around the border, finished, I did finish, no, I did not finish the border. I still have, whoops, 
Yeah, I still have some of the crosses to finish down here. And, but I did start the alphabet. And that little inner um, band that goes there, that green. And I am using um, a Verisois 100.3 silk for that on 46 count latte is the linen. Again, I don't know the manufacturer of it, although it seems to me I should know that. But 46 count, let me just show you that again because I'm pretty impressed with myself at how tiny this is. And I'm using a hoop, I'm using a size 28 needle, which usually I use as 26, 28 is really small. But that is nice. Now, this is one where she didn't give us the colors from the original sampler, so we're choosing our own. And I am choosing what I think of as traditional sampler colors, just four. The red, the green, that tan color, and there's a pink. And in lieu of signing it, or you know, putting my own name in it, I'm going to stitch my initials EHW in this tan color in this upper alphabet. It's convenient that my initials come in alphabetical order. So that's kind of fun. And finally, I will show you this. I took it out of the hoop this time. Uh, this is um, Under the Roof of Blue Ionian Weather. Uh, by It's a painting by a 19th century Painter, painter, and I have the information about this as well as everything else in the description box underneath the video. And um, I'm right around here right now. So, you know, I'm almost at the halfway point, not quite to the halfway point. And of course, I haven't stitched solidly all the way to that point, but here's where I am. Um, you know, the light in here, sorry, the, the way I can arrange different lights, I can't get that to be completely smooth without ironing it. I could iron it, couldn't I? But I don't know what this nylon um, thread stuff would do if I ironed it. So I'm not going to take that chance. But something interesting that happened was I was working right up in this area, and I realized I was off by a stitch. Now, that is the middle of a rose bush, and who would ever know that I was off by a stitch? So I considered not doing anything about it. But I realized that as I continued to work in that area, I was going to be confused for a while because I would say, oh, well, I'm supposed to count over three and put this color there, but there's already a stitch there. What shall I do? Do I go higher, lower, left, right, whatever? And I decided, you know, I'm just gonna rip it out. But the problem with full coverage, and you know, I have not shown you the back of this. I told you a few videos ago, I don't wanna hear one word, not one word about the back of my cross stitch. But I am gonna show you this. Just keep it to yourself. I know you have opinions, everyone does. So this is where I ripped out a few stitches, maybe 10, 12 or so stitches, but I could not tease it out from the other colors. And so I had to cut some threads and I could not even pull the threads out, you know, the, the tails of the threads out. So I don't know, I don't know where, where that stands. Some threads are not anchored back there. They're just cut. And I decided that that's just gonna have to be fine. I think it will be fine. Uh, I think once I get it all stitched, it will regain stability just through the thickness of having the, um, you know, all that stitching there and it will be okay. I think it will be fine. And certainly once it's framed, it will be fine, especially if I put glass over it. I mean, it isn't like a, um, a sweater where you, you would not want any issues with the seams because it's gonna be pulled. It's going to be pretty, um, you know, nothing's gonna be happening there. And I think once I get that part stitched, it'll be okay. So those are the four things I either have worked on or am going to work on soon. Uh, I mean, 
in, in the case of the blackbird uh, in full glory, that will be later today. And I also wanted to show you this little deal. This is a Stitch Pal. It's funny when I show when I look at this in the camera, it looks weird. It looks as if the camera is having trouble with it. So I'm sorry if that's the case. Um, this is made by Dot Dot Goose, and it's a little folder that you open up. This is sort of a mm, slight, you know, almost like flannel but I'm sure it's polyester. This is almost like felt, except it's a knit something, and it snaps closed. And so the idea is that when you have thread left over, you just lay it on here and it this felt type surface keeps it from sliding off. And at the end of your stitching, you can just close this and it has an, a cute little snap, a little heart shaped black snap there. And you can um, just drop it in your project bag and when you're ready to start again, the thread that you had not finished, you know, a thread that was of enough length to bother saving, you can say, you can just put in here and it won't fall out. Now, the reason I got this was not because I needed to buy one from Dot Dot Goose, particularly, that's an Etsy shop, by the way, it's because I thought, you know, I've seen people show these on floss tube, and I thought I could probably make that. But since I'd never physically held one or seen one with my own eyes, I wasn't sure what it exactly amounted to. And I will tell you the things that surprised me about it. The main thing is it's much stiffer than I imagined. It has quite a stiff uh, fusible interfacing in it. And I have some, like, that's this stiff. So I, I have that thing, and of course I have a little bit of fabric. And the other thing that surprised me is how small it is. I sort of imagined it was a little bigger, like maybe a half, an eight and a half by 11 sheet. So as I'm considering whether I would make such a thing for myself or as a gift or whatever, um, I may make it a little differently. I may make it more the way I imagined that it was, but it's really good to see what at least somebody's envisionment, envisionment, vision of this type of thing is. I think it could be quite useful. So that is what I wanted to show with regard to cross stitch today. today. And I don't have anything major to show in the, um, variety show, that's the word, portion. I just wanted to give a few updates on topics that I've talked about before. The biggest news is that the volcano in Iceland is erupting again. And I've put some links to some uh, YouTube channels under, the, under this video if you're curious about that. And I'm also gonna put a picture in right now, a screenshot that I took uh, either this morning or last night probably it was last night, of what it looks like right now. And I also put one in that was from last spring, which is when it started erupting. It erupted for several months, maybe five or seven months, and then it stopped erupting. But within the past few weeks, a lot of earthquakes have been tracked there and uh, it started erupting again. And as you may remember, and I covered this, or I talked about it in a video, oh, I don't remember what number, a while back. Um, and I may have mentioned this at the time, but Iceland is one of the few places on earth that the boundary between two tectonic plates is above the surface of the ocean. And you can clearly see those two tectonic plates. And on the east of Iceland is the European plate, and on the west of it is the North American plate. And there's a fissure that is opening up. Those two are moving apart from each other there. And so as the, as the tectonic plates move apart, the soil, the uh, earth beneath those plates 
becomes exposed and thin, you know, um, the crust of the earth is thinner there because those plates are spreading apart and that's why there's volcanic activity there. So the nation of Iceland is growing by a few centimeters a year because those plates are moving apart and the area between is being filled in with, with lava in this case and with the crust welling up in other cases. And I've said a lot of things that I don't really know just now. I've said some high percentage, more than 100% of what I know, so it's possible I've gotten some details wrong, but I'm quite fascinated by this volcano, particularly since my friend Kimberly and I visited Iceland a few years ago, and we were right in that area. There was no volcano in evidence then. I mean, there was tons of volcanoes in evidence because the island was created by volcanoes, but there were no active volcanoes happening at that time. So anyway, I just present to you those channels in case you're interested in seeing it. I especially think that those of us in Eastern North America who are in the Eastern time zone should tune in in the late afternoon uh, to early evening because it's dark in Iceland and the lava is so interesting and so brilliant when you see it in the dark. It's less brilliant when you see it in the daylight. Uh, I mean, it's still, if I were there and could be present at that volcano, I'd be happy to see it in the daylight. But it's really dramatic at night. Another thing is that I had this idea at one point that I would design a quilt that would represent a volcano erupting using orange and red and yellow and white and black and dark gray. And I would aim at the, uh, the look of a volcano at night. And this would not be representational. I would not be trying to recreate an actual volcano. I would be capturing the essence of what a volcanic eruption looks like. But I haven't done that. And which brings me to another thing. I have been just working like mad this week on that commission quilt. And I've made a lot of progress. I feel as if I'm a few days, a couple of days, four maybe. If I were to continue to work three or four hours a day on it, I would have the top, the main part of the top finished. So that's my thought, is that I'm going to try to really press on uh, in order to do that. Then I have to figure out what goes around the edges, how the um, little edge pieces to take up that 60 degree or 120 degree angle, how that's going to be filled in. I know what colors and design the pieces are, but I need to figure out the exact dimensions and the um, how I'm going to sew those in there. Then I put a narrow border on it. And <clears throat> then the next step on making a quilt, so once you have a top, oh, it's gonna have to be pressed very carefully um, to get all the seams to be as flat as they can be. So I'll be, that'll take some time once I have the, the whole main part of the top put together. Then the next thing is that I will decide on what batting I'm using for it which I'm probably gonna use 100% cotton, fairly thin batting. I have the backing, so I need to square that up and get it the right size. Once I have the top finished, I'll know what dimensions I need for the backing. And then I'm gonna take it over to our long arm machine and baste it there because I'm going to hand quilt it. I know, crazy. As I've said before, I know it's crazy for me to have a long arm machine at my disposal and still be planning to hand quilt this quilt. But that's just, that's what the customer, what she and I agreed on. And so I think it'll be interesting. I haven't hand quilted anything in quite a while. Um, speaking of um, quilting, I think next week I will be uh, uploading a video of my friend Cindy and me in our studio, our quilting studio, and we're going to talk about our quilting. And 
we made, we video, we recorded this last Saturday, I think it was, and I'm going to put it up, I think, this coming week. So you can watch for that. I won't call it Floss Tube and Variety Show. I'll call it something else. Um, probably I'll just call it for now a special edition quilt, as I've, I mean quilt, special edition uh, video, which I've put up a couple other special editions in the past, as you may recall. One of them was reading that humorous story, um, The Rheumatism Movement Cure, and the other one was how to play the game of Giotto. Um, so this will be another one in the special edition category. And just as a heads up, we have our friend Anne from Canada is visiting us soon. She's coming early next week. And once she arrives, I will be doing much less in the way of handwork, um, other than the commissioned quilt which I will have to just keep moving forward on. Other projects that I'm working on, all these cross-stitch things and knitting and other things like that, I probably will be doing less of. There will not be a floss tube and variety show a week from today. I know that. Uh, there might be the following week, uh, the night, which would be the Friday of that week is the 19th of August. There might or might not be the week after that, and there probably would be right at the end of August. So there might be, it might be every other week sort of coming up. And that's because, partly because we have a lot of things on our list of things we enjoy doing together, and I wanna be sure that I'm leaving time for that, and I don't even want to do the minimal editing and so forth on a video that I would have to do. And the other reason is, because I just won't be doing a lot of cross-stitch, which I think that's the, most of you, my viewers, have found this channel because you're interested in, in cross-stitch. So there won't be as much of that. I mean, I can talk endlessly about variety show topics, but I, I probably won't. Um, I probably won't do that. I kind of hope that in two weeks, I will have the completed commissioned quilt top to show you. Um, maybe I'll even have started quilting it by then. I, I would imagine that I would. Hope so, anyway. If I haven't, then I may have a problem <laughs> timing-wise. But anyway, that's, that's what the, probably the next month is going to look like. Now, the only other thing, was there anything else I wanted to say? No, I guess not. I guess that was it. So this is a this is sort of the old length of videos where I seem to hit between 20 and 25 minutes. Um, so that's what this is going to turn out to be. After I turn off the webcam, I'm going to be uh, possibly this evening or certainly tomorrow morning doing round eight, the eighth and final round of the World Puzzle Federation Sudoku Grand Prix, 90 minutes trying to solve some Sudoku puzzles. Um, I would love to get 60, 80 points in this final round, but I'll be happy if I solve one or two puzzles correctly. So that's, that would be my goal on that. And other than that, I'm just gonna carry on. I hope you all have a good a week of cross stitch or quilting or volcano viewing or whatever suits you. And thanks to a few of you who are new subscribers. I appreciate that. If you're watching this video and you haven't subscribed, especially given my irregular um, recording schedule coming up, if you enjoy this, now you may not enjoy it, and so you may want to just hold off on subscribing. I totally understand. But if you do enjoy this and you don't want to miss a video, I suggest that you subscribe and click the notifications bell. That way, whenever I do post a video or a short or anything else that I get up to, you will not miss it. And I plan, so again, watch for the quilting video next week sometime. And um, another Floss Tubman Variety Show probably in two weeks. And we'll see what happens after that. Thanks so much for joining me and many blessings to you, friends.